he was talking to uh, a, a popular daily called Le Parisien, and they'd invited a few dozen readers so that he would have a kind of forum, a kind of sort of public square event. And to somebody who may have been prompted said, uh, what's really annoying is that 85% of ICU beds are being uh, occupied by COVID sufferers who refuse to be vaccinated. Isn't that unfair? And that fed him very well his answer. And he said, this is very true. That's the best argument. 90% of the French are pro-vax, uh, or rather are vaccinated, which is not exactly the same thing. And uh, the, the, the situation right now is one in which I cannot force people to be vaccinated, but I can certainly pee them off. And I want, I very much want, he said, to pee them off. So uh, <laughs> they will have access to the hospital, but they won't be able to go to a cafe or uh, the, the, to take a train, for instance. I've just been reading a few minutes ago, uh, Anne Elizabeth, some wire copy, a story from the French Caribbean colony of Guadeloupe, where they were trying to vaccinate people. And it was literally, it just dropped in my inbox half an hour ago. And the scientific... Uh, inspector, the person in charge of the effort to vaccinate the locals, uh, was stripped of his clothes and was beaten unconscious. I mean, maybe not in Guadeloupe, but certainly in, in France, when we think of the appetite for resistance is very strong when central government tries to impose its will. It's interesting, therefore, that the French president's restricted his, his intervention to rhetoric so far, rather than going down the mandatory road. It's very strange, but you have to remember that at the beginning, France was not producing a vaccine, and it was incredibly cagey starting to vaccinate, while well, Britain had absolutely embarked immediately from December into, into a wave of vaccination that proved to be a success. At that time, Europe had decided to buy all the vaccines together because it would be more useful, it was more bureaucratic, and didn't work out so well. There was a given day to start vaccination, and, and the, uh, the specialist who never would speak, you know, the hospital people who would never speak without an authorization of the hierarchy said we're going to go very cautiously, very carefully to see whether this vaccine is dangerous, which, of course, uh, fueled the anti-vax feeling in France. There was a lack of courage and, and I would say, a, a desire to be scoring cheap points to some extent, except these are not cheap points. They've proved to be very expensive. Eventually, after two, three months, the French got their act together, and now France is about as much vaccinated as Britain. Um, but you still have about 10% of the population who aren't and are very vocal. And you've got to put this in the context that since the terrorist attacks of 2015, France has lived in one kind of sort of state of emergency or another. So we've had, we've had reductions on public freedom since 2015. And you have people who say, I'm for the vaccine, but I think that the uh, decisions that are taken at the National Assembly with the vast, vast majority and without listening to people trying to sort of uh, reduce the number of amendments in the House, etc., all sorts of and the powers of inspection that have been given to people who are not uh, 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 civil servants are such that there has been a sort of uh, a pushback among the political parties saying, uh, we think the vaccine is a good thing, but we think that the, 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 habit, the habit of sort of uh, uh, not paying attention to civil liberties is something that this government is pushing too far. So it's a combination of many things, and you've got to realize that the election is the presidential election is on 7th and 21st of April. We have two rounds. And that Macron right now is bringing essentially uh, the majority he thinks with him.